I'm going to explain a horror fantasy movie called Legion. Spoilers ahead, keep watching till the end. The movie opens with a vast, barren land scene with a woman's voice in the background, solemn and weary. The next scene is in Los Angeles on the 23rd of December at 1.02 a.m. There is darkness filled with chaotic sounds. Then comes Michael falling from the sky. He starts peeling off his coat, which reveals his wings. The next scene shows a guard inside a shop with a flashlight. As he bends down to pick a toy, Michael jumps on top of him and kills him. He then uses a fishing wire to stitch the horrendous holes on his back left by the detachment. Michael races along with racks and racks of guns, searching for weapons. Meanwhile, two cops, Burton and Estevez, patrol downtown in their police cars. A loud explosion commences almost right in front of them. Michael appears from the smoke. He is carrying two huge sports bags. The cops ordered him to drop the bags and to position his hands behind his head. Estevez slowly approached him. They attempted to cuff his hands, but Michael grabs him to be used as a human shield. Burton points the gun towards Michael and commands him to let go of his partner. Burton suddenly had his head shaking like crazy. The now possessed Burton reminds and warns Michael that this was not God's orders given to him. Burton shoots Estevez and Michael then kills the possessed cop, leaving both cops lifeless. He picks both bags and drives away in the police car. In the next scene, G. Panson bolts awake from a bad dream. He's breathing deep and is covered with sweat. He gets up from bed, steps out of one of the trailers. He gazes up to the diner's roof, where a large sign glows Paradise Falls. Then comes Charlie, a pregnant girl. She asks Jeep if he is alright and says she couldn't sleep because of the baby kicking. They have a conversation about how he worries about her too much. Jeep says that he believes that she can be better with him and raise the baby together. Charlie pats him on the shoulders and leaves. It is the following day. Bob is shown trying to fix the TV. Meanwhile, Percy is seen cooking on the grill. On the other side of the diner, we see a beautiful girl, Audrey. She's leaning over a jukebox. Howard and Sandra Anderson are both disgusted as they see their daughter sway her hips to the beat. A blazed desert path. A black Cadillac is seen driven by Kyle. He passes a weathered road sign. He checks the map and pulls over. Leaning next to the broken telephones is Charlie. Kyle grabs a crumpled hand-drawn map. He shows it to the pregnant Charlie who is smoking. He also says that smoking is not going to do any good for the baby. Both Charlie and Kyle enter the diner. Charlie then gives a pack of cigarettes to Kyle. Kyle asks Bob if he can use his phone. Howard butts in to ask when his car will be fixed. Bob goes out of the diner and into the mechanics bay. He finds out that Jeep is not doing his job fixing the car. Instead, he's seen cleaning up a small crib for Charlie. Bob becomes upset. He confronts Jeep about what he is doing with his life and about his obsession towards Charlie. Bob believes that it is time for him to leave the place. Jeep says that he is constantly having dreams about Charlie. Bob tells him that he had the same visions when he was young. Dark clouds form and fill the horizon to the south. Jeep turns his gaze up to the North Highway. Meanwhile, back in the diner, the TV is on snow screen. Bob gives it a final wallop. It snaps into the graphic of the emergency broadcast system. The TV also made its hollow tone which fills the diner. Percy's old battery-powered radio also did the same thing. Audrey speculates that it could be a terrorist attack. Bob calms everyone down. A beat-up 80s Cutlass Supreme pulls off the highway. An old lady steps out of the car. Grandma enters the diner. She orders her food and comments on how unusual the name Charlie is for a girl. The old woman smiles at the Andersons. She introduces herself as Gladys. As Sandra tells her what happened earlier, she says that things will be over soon. Jeep enters the diner. He quietly huddled with Bob about the car's condition. He says that it'd take time to fix the car. Bob is upset about the news. Charlie hands over the order. Next is a sudden turn of events. Gladys starts cursing. She says that babies should burn, including Charlie's. 
Sandra tries silencing Gladys but fails. Gladys calls her a C who constantly complains. They're shocked and stirred by what Gladys said. Howard stands and tries making Gladys apologize. Gladys lunges towards Howard and takes a bite out of his neck. He crumbles to the floor. Percy throws a pan at the old woman. It breaks her neck. Surprisingly, she is still standing. She jumps and starts walking on the wall and up to the ceiling like a lizard. Bob is shooting his shotgun. She lands right in front of Bob, slaps him and knocks him unconscious. Jeep snatches the gun and aims at Grandma but cannot pull the trigger. Suddenly, three gunshots come from behind. Gladys falls to the ground. It's Kyle with his gun. Sandra runs to Howard and screams for someone to help her. They frantically carry Howard to the Escalade. Kyle drives as fast as he can. Audrey noticed the dark clouds. Numbers of flies begin to hit the windshield. The car enters the swarm. Everyone is screaming. Jeep is puking into a toilet bowl. Bob is tending his sore cheek. Jeep wishes he pulled the trigger earlier. Bob comforts his son by telling him that it was all right. They hear the sound of the front door chimes. They carry Howard into the diner, all of them gasping for air. Percy races to get his Bible and start praying. As Bob looks up, he sees the swarm of flies. The sky plunges into blackness. They cover Gladys's body and take her out. A police cruiser skids to a wild stop in front of the restaurant. It was Michael. Charlie's face lit up as she saw the police car. She runs outside to him. Charlie freezes a few feet from the car when she sees the piercing eyes of Michael. Bob raises his shotgun and demands Michael to show his teeth. Michael lets out a dangerous smile. He snatches the gun from Bob. Michael tells them that they do not have much time and possessed people like Gladys will arrive in no time. Michael opens the car's trunk. He distributes the weapons. That night, everyone was very alarmed. The room goes out of power. It was pitch black. As everyone goes up the roof, they hear eerie music. An ice cream truck drives slowly toward the diner. A tall figure steps out of the van. The ice cream man is unnaturally thin and he bolts to the diner with startling speed. Michael and the men start firing. Bullets rip into the creature's body. It knocks him on his back, arms and legs still twitching. They look around to see numerous headlights appear from the darkness. It's a parade of commuters. The men let loose with ferocious firepower. Vehicles swerve and collide with one another. Tires blow out and engines crash. Charlie is ready to shoot, holding the gun. Suddenly, the window shatters. Something gets a hold of Howard's body. Sandra dives for Howard's stretched hands. It was a teenager about Audrey's age. Howard screams as his body is torturously stretched. Another disfigured man punches through the window. It grabs Charlie's hands. Jeep comes to the rescue and grabs her free arm just before she's pulled through. Michael had then disarmed the possessed. Jeep and Charlie scoot away from the window as Michael lit up the night with successive firepower. Howard is split from his family's hands and out of the window. The dark figures started to pull back. After the incident, Bob demands some explanation of what was going on. Michael told them that this is extermination, that the weakest willed are the easiest to turn. Michael also says that their beliefs do not matter as the only thing that matters is the safety of Charlie's baby. This intrigued Charlie. She says that she is just a regular waitress not worthy of any saving. The fallen angel stressed that she bears the child who is the only hope for mankind, the Messiah. Percy and Kyle are on the roof guarding. They're surrounded by coldness. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, Bob is cooking while Sandra stares blankly at her prescriptions. Bob notices how distressed Sandra is and offers a can of beer. It reminded her of Howard and how he was the beer drinker in the family. Sandra burst into tears. Jeep and Michael have a conversation about everything going on and about Michael's past. He said that Jeep is one of the reasons he is doing this right now. After the talk, Michael heads to the roof. There is a faint glint of sunlight. Michael is searching the horizon for movement. It reminds him of a few things. Sandra wakes up hearing the voice of Howard calling her. Percy runs to get a hold of Sandra, 
just a few feet away from the nailed husband. Howard's body, covered with boils and pustules, explodes, shooting acidic juice around him. They went back inside the diner. Percy came to a stop and fell. The backside of his body is melted by the acid. He dies. Sandra was tied to a chair. Audrey tunes the radio for the hint of a voice. Michael counters everyone's belief that they can head to Red Rock National for refuge, saying it's too dangerous. That night, the second wave of possessed attacks. Kyle is lured out and killed by a trap. The invasion of a possessed boy pushes and panics Charlie into labor. Audrey and Michael help her deliver the baby. In fear, Sandra breaks her restraints and decides to give the baby to the possessed. A spectral light pours into the diner. Michael guns her down. Gabriel then enters the diner. He slices Bob's torso with his razor-sharp wings. Michael urges the group to leave. Find the prophets, learn to read the instructions, he instructs Jeep. Despite their best efforts, the hordes of possessed humans are unable to approach Charlie's baby. Jeep, Charlie, Audrey, and the baby make their way to Michael's car. Gabriel and Michael fight to a standstill. It ends with Gabriel stabbing Michael through the chest with his mace. Michael dies and his body disappears. Bob ignites the diner's gas main and blows up the restaurant. Gabriel emerges and swoops down on the speeding vehicle. Audrey jumps on him and yells at Jeep to slam on the brakes as he tries to reach Charlie. Gabriel corners the three in the nearby mountains. He is about to kill them. Michael falls from heaven as an angel once more. He stops Gabriel. Michael also says that everything that happened so far was part of God's plan to test his angels and Gabriel failed him. He slices Gabriel's stomach, rendering him immobile. Ashamed, Gabriel disappears. Michael tells Jeep that he is the child's true protector and that they will see him again. Michael then flies off. Charlie and Jeep make it to the top of the mountains. They see a small town in the valley below. The last view depicts a happy family, with a woman's voice in the background. It narrates that the birth of her son marks the start of a new beginning for humanity. Well, that's all for the video. Make sure you subscribe for more of these.